the first of a new breed. They gave us the best of the breed. They're crafted from steel and pride. Tanks in World War II never seem to get everything quite right. There always was a problem, either not enough firepower, too unreliable, not enough armor. It wasn't until the 29th Armored Brigade of the 11th Armored Division received the new cruiser A-34 Comet that finally the British could say that they had a tank that had good firepower, reliability, mobility and armor all at the same time. Uh, what they did come up with was a very well balanced and arguably Britain's first first class tank design. Unfortunately, the tank came a little bit too late to have any great effect in the war, but that doesn't deny the fact that it was a very good design. Starting at the front hull, you'll see it as a bit of a throwback in design. It's gone back to a vertical stepped plate. An interesting feature you'll see is that the driver has a plug or a hatch, they call it the visor, and uh, this is used in road marches in order to allow visibility because he does not have a hatch directly above him like most tanks. He will swing this open and he'll be able to see straight ahead of him. The downside, of course, is that this is a weak point in the armor. The effect of edge effect had not yet quite been figured out by that stage. You will note that the driver's visor is angled inward a bit like a plug or a wedge so that in the event of a strike directly into the driver's visor, it is not going to push the visor into the driver's face. The 7.92 BESA machine gun is located on the left-hand side of the tank. Now, of course, you'll note this was a tank designed for a ground war in Europe. They put the driver right-hand drive tank. Starting with the A13 pre-war tank, Chrissy's suspension was a common feature on British vehicles. Comet was the last of the line. Anything after that was going to use horsemen bogies. There are five pairs of road wheels on Comet, each one having a spring and shock absorber behind the armor plate here. Now the downside with Christie's suspension is that the springs take up so much room inside the tank, there's a lot less room inside than you would appear from looking at it from the outside. The other downside is repair work on Christie's suspension was terrible. If a bogey, such as the American Volute Suspension System, was damaged, it was very easy to unbolt the bogey and send it out. Christie's suspension, unfortunately, any maintenance work, the manual stated it had to be done at uh, a depot or workshop level. It couldn't be done by mechanics in the field. In fact, the only thing that the crewmen were really authorized to do, other than fill the lubrication points here in the nipples on the wheels, or to keep the shock absorber reservoir for the springs inside the armor, keep that topped up. So inside the sponson, and what we have here is a two and a half gallon reservoir for the shock absorber fluid. There's an equal one on the opposite side. Other routine maintenance that was to be uh, performed. 10 bolts in each side per road wheel. Make sure they're nice and tight. Feature at the time, the road wheels on the right hand side tighten by turning to the right. The road wheels on the left hand side, the nuts tighten by turning to the left. This was actually a pretty common feature on vehicles at the time, although you won't see it today. Technology and design of nuts and bolts has improved so that righty-tighty, lefty-loosey is still common. Another feature about the Comet that was different from the predecessors is we now have return rollers. Initially, Christie's suspension just had the track rolling loose on top of the road wheels. Now the problem with this is as the tanks got faster and faster, the shock of movement of the road wheels was such that it would throw the track up and hit against the skirtings. This process was called track slap. And in order to reduce this, they started putting the return rollers and tightening the track up a little bit more. All right, now I'm gonna diverge here quickly and go on a bit of a rant. Too many times have I seen unsupported suspension being referred to as Christie. No, wrong, not the case. You can have supported Christie suspension, case in point. So if you're doing your AFVID test and you look at a T55 and you say Christie suspension, as I've seen so many times, this is not accurate. Torsion bar. 